tell the difference that they are thinner. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. This is the true story. Yeah, that's the true story. And this is just the regular reissue. That's what we normally use. Well, I take this one and run it through my little sander twice to get it this. I start with it like this and let it run through. Flip it over and run it through again. It's that simple. And then I just you just put them on there.
one of the big changes on True Historic product this year is that we roll the frets on the binding before the neck is even put into the guitar. In the 50s, when Gibson made guitars and they made the fingerboards, they made a fingerboard assembly, which was the fingerboard with the inlays in it, with the frets in it, and the binding on it. And then they ran the fingerboard on a shaper machine to start the rolling process. So that if you look at a neck, and a neck is this thick, if you look at a section of a neck, and it's this thick, from the bottom, it starts almost as a circle and comes up almost as a circle all the way past the top edge of the fret. That's for comfort of playing. So in order to accommodate that same feel, what we've done this year is we have started rolling the binding on True Historics, but we do it when the neck is not in the guitar so that we can get the entire neck and it's easier for us than just doing the fingerboard. So um, I'll show you some of the process that we use for doing that. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm just trying to cut down some of the binding and get the binding edge um, from the corner of the fret to the corner of the fret, even with the fingerboard. Um, that's the first part of the process. The second part of the process is that I'm going to uh, start the beginning of shaping the nib of the binding um, onto the fret. The file that we use to do this with is uh, um, basically just a needle knife file except for it's flat on the back side so when I'm pushing against the binding and the fingerboard it will not groove it out and I'm just trying to start the initial shape on the fret. Then after that part, um, I'll start to scrape this down a little bit with the razor blade. Then at this point, I'll start rolling the actual binding itself. The binding that I'm dealing with right now is what's in between the frets. And now this file is at a specific degree um, so that it will do the majority of the rolling process.
So that's basically what the process is. Um, this will get some more sanding and stuff to finish it out totally, but this is about the, the point that they take this to. And if you feel this side, you'll feel that um, it's nice and round versus this side, which is actually very square and sharp. So on all the true historic guitars, we do something that we don't do for any of our other product, which is we pick specific backs for the true historic guitars. On the true historic guitars, I want a specific grain pattern on the back so that it will more closely match the grain pattern on the necks. All of our necks are quarter sawn necks. So the grain in the back of the neck appears to be more ribbon type grain versus flat grain. So every week when we get our production schedule together, I come back and I go through the light and the super light backs to find the best backs for the True Historics. Weight wise, I'm looking for um, a fairly wide variety of weight. Of course, has to meet the reissue spec, but on the weight, I like backs that are about eight and a half pounds and a little bit lighter than that. I think that they make uh, great sounding guitars. So what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll look through the backs. Now you can see this particular back would not be a good historic, true historic back for me. It's a beautiful back except for uh, the grain pattern in it does not match a quarter sawn grain pattern. So I probably would not pick a back like this out. Yet, if I come over to this stack and I look in this stack, then I have a back like this and the color is very good on the back. And it has more straight grain in the back. And that's what I'm looking for. I look for that for several reasons. One is some of the nicer original guitars, I see grain that looks like that in it. But the other reason is when we sand and fill the guitars with the aniline die filler, if it's quarter sawn, the aniline die filler will take on that piece of wood more consistently with the neck. So my backs and my necks match much better in color.
the two guitars are different types of wood, therefore they re responded differently. Both look good, but I had to add green to the one that was a lighter piece of wood. So what we'll do is when I paint the run, I'll just look at each piece and decide if it needs it or not. Almost paint one at a time, basic same process, but maybe add to, get, to achieve a certain color. Both guitars look really good, but they are, are different shades of, of yellow and brown.